I mean, maybe be constantly like weekends. I go up to the school, just run the bleachers. You know what I'm saying? Go get some backpedaling drills in, footwork drills in, hit the track. I just felt like I had to separate myself. My grind would separate me from everybody else. I, I was super competitive in high school, man. Uh, anything I did, I had to be first at it. If we was doing a drill at practice, I had to be the best one doing that drill. Uh, man, if we if we was in the classroom, man, I had to be the best one in the classroom. So I was just always competitive at everything I did, man. I competed every time I got on the field, man. I played other sports, ran track, played basketball, and everything I did, everything I did was geared to being the best that you know myself could be. I didn't worry about anybody else, man. I just worried about myself. Stayed in my lane and just kept working. I, I never dreamed in a million years that I would be in the National Football League. It was, it was kind of, it sounds dumb to say, but it was kind of luck. You know, for me, it was like I wasn't going to college unless I got a scholarship. And so, like, that was the first thing on my list. Like, I wasn't thinking NFL. I was thinking I need a scholarship. I, I've seen several of y'all at this camp want to be noticed. It's the same way in that classroom. And I think we as athletes, we sometimes forget that. We forget that you can't have one without the other. I got a 17-year-old and has scholarships to South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia Tech. And he doesn't like school enough to even want to play football. And it blows my mind because, like, it was nothing you was going to do to keep me off that football field. You could have said run through a brick wall, write 10 papers, and, and, and I need it on my desk tomorrow. I'm going to find a way to get it done, to play in that game. The education aspect, get your schoolwork done. You'd rather do it now than, than think about five, six, seven years. All of us can name 20, 30 homeboys who was better than us, who could have been right in our, in our shoes, but for some reason or another. I use football as more of a stepping stone. You know, like, if I don't pass this class, I'm not getting on that football field. You know, like, or if I don't, if I get in trouble outside of school, I can't play football. So I just use football more of a stepping stone for me. School really wasn't my thing, but that's, I had to do it to get where I needed to go. When I was in high school, uh, I dealt with the scratches by, I mean, I know like D. Hall, Tyson said they'd never seen themselves, you know what I'm saying, really playing the league at first. But for me, I always knew. So like when it came time, like with peer pressure and all that other stuff, I knew what I had had to do to get to on the field, so I ain't let none of that stuff get in my way. It's kind of like you gotta know what you want, man, and sometimes you gotta cut people off. I mean, it's just what it is, what it is, so. If they didn't understand that I had this to do to better myself and get me in a better position, they could see the door, to be honest with you, because I was trying, if they aren't in the same boat as me or at least trying to better themselves, I like, I was telling them they, they my dog, but I gotta get this done for my sake. To be honest with you, uh, my favorite word was no. If I didn't want to do it and I knew it was wrong, I'll say no. Being honest, it was hard at first because, you know, everybody being, you want to be cool. And my girlfriend usually say, you know, you were a popular loser in high school where, you know, everybody's not going to be, want to be your friend because, you know, you ain't doing big things. But later on in life, all this hard work you're putting in, like I tell you guys on the field, effort is going to pay off in the end where now everybody want to, want to know what you're doing and how you did this and how you did that. And you don't have to worry about the what ifs. You just, you know, handled your business now to enjoy life later on. When it comes to leadership, man, it's a lot of things you have to say and you have to do that. You know, you might have to step on some toes. A lot of people aren't going to like everything that you do. But in order to get where you want to get to the championship, to, to the next level, you got to do that. And I'm sure everybody in here know who, who Michael Jordan is. Man, Michael Jordan, they, if, you, if you read up on Michael Jordan, man, they say that he was one of the hardest people on his teammates. He used to cuss them out at practice. They used to get in fights. Man, he got six rings. You know, people look at those six rings, and you know, those six rings just don't come out of nowhere. They didn't just give it to him. Man, he was on his teammates, man, every day working, you know, on their back, man. And that's just what you have to do as a leader, man. You, you set that path for others to follow, man. And if you keep doing that, man, you stay on that, man, you get where you need to go. Uh, I feel like being a leader, it started at home for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up in high school. My pops weren't in my career, so I became the leader. I was the man in my career. So that, it just carried over to the football field and the sports. And <laughs> when you're a leader, 
people not gonna like everything you got to say. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be people that wanna go against you. You know what I'm saying? They ain't on the same page as you, but I mean, if you know where you're trying to lead and the direction that you're trying to go, eventually they're gonna hop on board. Leaders kind of stand alone. You know, um, you, you just separate yourself from everybody. You just do more, you work harder. You know, uh, you, say, you say things everybody don't, everybody might not like, you know, so you just step on toes and, and when you just, when you lead, when you make that path for others, they gonna follow because they seeing you being successful. I mean, leadership, leadership to me, you know, it was something that, that I never really, never really wanted as a player. Um, you know, I was, I was always so focused on myself and, you know, it wasn't really till the coach sat me down and was like, look, the impact you have, like dudes are watching you. You might not think dudes are watching you, but dudes are watching you and they're watching what you do. They're watching how you come to practice. And it wasn't really till he sat me down and told me that, that I was like, man, you know, like, I guess I am a leader because I never really, I was always the young guy. So I never really was thrusted into that position. But I think the biggest fear for me leading was it was always going to be somebody watching me. It was always going to be somebody to hold me accountable. And I was lazy as hell. Like I was gifted and I was talented. I was fast, but I hated to run. I hated to work out. And so when I was thrusted into a position of leadership, it was like, oh shit, like I have to like be on my A game every day. Like I can't take days off like I used to do. And so I would challenge all y'all, the reason you play this sport is because you want to be seen, right? You want to be the best. Like you're not out here playing because you just, eh, I want to ride the pine this year, guys. I'm going to play football. Like you playing because you want to be a star. You want to be the man. And so you got to do the same. Like you got to lead. You got to practice the same way. Like true leadership and true integrity is doing things when nobody's watching. So yeah, you working out now because the camera's out here. You're doing all the little things right now. But when you leave here, are you going to do the same things? And that's what, that's what I think we all try to challenge you guys to do. And that's why we're here. We want you guys to see us and see like, we came from the same situation. Some of us 10 times worse situations than y'all came from. And we all sitting up here, like you ain't gonna confuse none of us for no role scholars, straight A honor roll students. But hell, we made it work, we figured it out. So it ain't no reason why none of y'all with the access y'all got and the stuff y'all got at y'all fingertips that y'all can't be sitting up here. I don't wanna hear about nobody didn't get in college because they weren't doing what they were supposed to do in the classroom. That's easier than the football field. You know what I'm saying? Them books don't punch back. I feel like for me, bro, I, I knew how to listen too. Like I learned how to follow before I knew how to lead. Uh, I played with, me and Mike played on the same high school team and he was one of the older guys. So I always watched him and see how he did things. And then when he had left, I was a leader myself. So I just knew how to follow first, man. That was the main thing. And then when I became a leader, I just try to go hard as I can in everything I do because I knew everybody was watching me. And I knew being a leader that you gotta automatically work harder, you gotta study more, you gotta you gotta be on point at all times, and that's hard, but that's life. So if you wanna be if you wanna be a great player, man, or just a great person in life, man, you gotta take on some type of leadership. But to add on to that, uh, going to high school, uh, I was still learning about football. I didn't start till eighth grade, so I just told myself really just be coachable. Like I said, I was trying to be coachable, trying to just listen, trying to learn as much as I could on the, on the fly. And I, like I said, like in high school, I didn't talk much, so everything I did was based on my actions. So if I, if I, was, if I had to do anything at the football field, I did it. I need straight on this classroom too. So my father already had instilled in me on a worth ethic to be the best I can do in anything I could possibly do. And I had to tell myself there were no excuses or anything I had to do. For, for instance, uh, I was in the summer, like, my homeboy's the coach of the Ocean Lakes right now. He can tell you the story himself. Um, but one day I had to go to practice in the summer. The buses weren't there yet, and I needed a ride to school. So I called all my friends who are in my, in my neighborhood to give me a ride. They're already on their way there. And so my parents weren't there. They're at work. So I just had to think to myself, am I just going to stay home and blame someone else? Or am I handle it my own way? So I just really just, I huffed it. I walked about two and a half hours just to go to, go, go to practice. And I did it until I finally got a ride to school. I'm gonna start with this. So I have an interesting story how my career started off. So I played four years D tackle at ODU, all conference tackle, whatever. No, went undrafted. 
So I went to Chicago because the best situation, D line, you no know, guys beat up. So I'm like, okay, I can handle this. First year, practice squad for most of the year. Then later on in the year, they put me on 53 to get some couple games in. Coach gets fired, brings in the head coach, and the D coordinator told the head coach, you know, I feel Rashad will be a better offense alignment than defense alignment. So I took that as a damn, they don't even want me no more. They probably just trying to get me out of here. And remember what I told you on the field, effort shows. When he tell you run through the line, when he tell you finish the block, run your feet, it shows up on film, it shows up in front of the coaches and your hard work. So they liked me enough to give me a chance to play offensive line. Didn't know what I could do. I haven't played offensive line since high school. Never played tackle in my life. Uh, how'd it go? So they told me, look, you want to play five years D-line, making it as a fifth man, just barely scratching the clone on a 53-man roster, or do you want a 10-year career when you're healthy playing offensive tackle? So I took the tackle position. You know, I, I, I moped a little bit. You know, I went home. My girl's like, is either you going to cry, get sent home, or man up and, you know, put your money where your mouth is. So luckily, I worked hard enough where I was getting beat up in practice every day. Like, I lost, I don't know how many reps I lost in team where it was like sack after sack after sack. I said, yo, I'm about to get smacked this first game against the Ravens. First game I get in, you no know, nervous. Kick set, kick set, get beat, okay, I'm good. Got my confidence. I had the most preseason snaps last season, gave up zero sacks. And coach was like, you know, you, you're pushing our budget now. We're gonna have to keep you on a 53-man roster. So I was like, all right, cool. And so that, that told me, like, my mindset was I had to learn, like he said, leadership. I had to learn how to follow. And I saw guys, older guys get beat, like Khalil Mack would get blocked by a tight end one play or, or like, our all-pro center, our all-pro left tackle get beat by a guy that probably got cut the next week. They'll come back and say, look, what did you do wrong that play? And correct yourself and watch it on film instead of getting down on yourself and – just harp on the back. If you keep thinking about what happened last play, the next play you're going to get beat again. So they'll tell me, like, look, you, you got beat. Now, what do you do wrong? That's what you got coaches for, to listen, because coaches is never going to steer you wrong. So my coach would tell me, okay, keep your head back or get your hands up faster. It's like mentality is, okay, I got beat, but I guarantee you next play you're not going to beat me with the same move. I'm going to make sure my technique is right and I'm sharp. So I took it as, like, Instead of saying, okay, I'm not good enough to play defense and line, I say, you know what, maybe I'm just better at offensive alignment, you know, do whatever it takes to make it. That's, why I, that's how I took it, like, do whatever it takes. Of course, with you in the situation, like, I, I love pressure. I love the pressure. I never, I, I don't never like to fold. I, I love the pressure. It's like, all right, you put a lot of pressure on me, prove people, I love proving people wrong. Like, just work at it. Like, I tell you guys the effort. I told some of the offensive linemen earlier, I said, 20 minutes before practice, I know you in high school, so 20 minutes after practice, it'll work on one thing. And I guarantee you, you'll see your game go up compared to everybody just started hitting their peak. You'll start going up and realize, like, the little things matter. Just, just the little things matter. It will make the biggest difference in your game. You know, I have a couple, I have a couple businesses right now that I'm going to let grow. And 10 years, you know, hopefully I have, a, you know, about 10, 12 kids running around. You know, uh, sitting on the beach somewhere. <laughs> but no, man, just uh, in 10 years, man, uh, really, though, I want to I wanna be able to not have to work. And what I mean by that, man, is I don't want to have to have to go out and, and get a job when I'm done with football. I want, I want my businesses to grow. I want to work for myself. Uh, I want to get up when, when I want to get up, not when somebody else tells me to get up. So uh, that, that's my plan. I felt like a, a bum. You know, you're going against a little Mac every day, bro. He's like, future Hall of Famer, and you're going to get beat. That's what it's, it's going to happen. Even if, with a bum, you're going to get beat once in a while. It's, it's the truth. Like, but he, Khalil told me, like, look, if you show that like, you're scared, then I'm going to eat you up. If you show me like you a man, then you're going to build that confidence where you can play at that level. Because he tells me, like, never play to your comp competition, pretty much. So if you say if you're going against the third string, play like it's your starter. Get on his, get on his I don't want to say the word, but get on his ass like he's a starter. Don't take plays off. That's how you get better. And even though I was losing, 
I was learning from it. I didn't take it in, okay, it's practice. I'm not giving up. A quarterback ain't getting hit. So I'm thinking, like, okay, what did I do wrong? It's like, I'll come to him after practice, like, look, what do you see that I, where I was messing up that you could beat me so easily? And he'll give me those tips. So where I go against guys, like, from the other teams, they'll be like, okay, just keep my head back and just stay calm. Like, well, I told you guys to just be patient and just chill until they get to, you know, arm length to hit, the, hit them. Excuse me, damn, I'm about to curse again. <laughs> so I was just like, he'll teach me stuff like that. Just be patient. It's like, like offensive line is like poetry. Be smooth and be patient. It's like difference when I played D-line, it was cause havoc, blow up the double team, you know, get up field, throw guys to the ground, trying to make the play. What he do now? <laughs> It ain't really that tough, man. Like, just it, it's tough when you're trying to do everything else, man. It, it, it's so funny. I was in the car. I got a 17-year-old. I was in the car playing this this song by Big Sean, Sacrifices. And I'm telling my son, I'm like, y'all listen to all that rap music, man. It ain't really saying nothing. You know, they ain't they're not talking about nothing. And so, like, this Big Sean song is like, I didn't make sacrifices. I didn't gave up the club life. I didn't gave up my love life. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's listing all these things he's given up to be a successful rapper, right? And so you ask me, well, is it hard to do schoolwork and play football? No. Is it hard if you're trying to do everything else as well? Hell yeah. Because there's only 24 hours in a day, right? School is going to eat up some of that time. Practice is going to eat up some of that time. If when you get out of practice, your priority is, man, let me go kick it with my homie at the mall. Let me go do this. Let me go do that. Let me go hang out on the block. Yeah, when are you going to get your homework done? But if you take your ass home, do that homework, and then figure out, all right, now, now, now what am I going to do? And just prioritize your stuff like that? Man, I don't remember doing homework in high school at all. And I made it out, straight up. Only reason I did homework in college because we had study hall, mandatory, which is something we all know about. And so your grades actually shoot up when you go to college because high school, we ain't had no study hall. It wasn't no mandatory. Come home, do your homework. In college, as soon as you're done with class or practice, they rush everybody to study hall and you sit in there for two and a half hours and somebody constantly walking around making sure you do your work. So we all had 3.0s in, in college. It was trying to get out of high school. That was the hard part. Just trying to balance all that, like he was saying, it's, it's only as hard as you really make it. Like, you got guys, like I went to Ohio State, and it was a big time school, and dudes are coming there and get caught up in that life where they trying to be a football player, but they also out here trying to go to every party or you know every club, and it's easy to get caught in that, and then that's when school hard. But when you, when you just focus on football, and, and school, for me, that's when my career took off. My junior year, that's all I did. I like what it was, my social life was suck for real because I, I went to practice went home studied football and I studied my my school work I remember coach Meyer was saying my freshman year you got three things you got your sport you got school and you got social life you only can pick two and it's what you want to choose with that don't be selfish retain process and give back and one day you can be sitting in these seats okay